So in this video, I'm going to teach you what exactly decision tree is and how useful it is, how to work with and like what is the role of decision tree in machine learning. So everything will be covered in this session. Let me just write it down. Decision tree. You can say it is one of the most important concept like to understand machine learning algorithms to simplify some of the other tasks that you will be understanding in a time. So let's start from the basic like what is a tree? So like if I want to explain it in real world examples, uh, a tree is nothing but it has many analogies in real life and it turns out that it has influenced a wide area of machine learning covering both classification and regression. So in your machine learning, it covers both your classification and your regression. These, these two topics, both the topics are covered. I have already covered in my previous lectures. If you are not still clear with them, I would request you to please pause the video and just go through the classification and regression concept once. All right. So, like uh, in daily life, we take, we do, and we take decisions, right? So, in decision analysis, a decision tree can be used to visually and explicitly represent decision, and it helps in decision making as well. So, as the name suggests, as the name goes, it is. It uses a tree-like model of decision. So I'll just note down the important points. Tree-like model. Okay. So uh, like it is widely used in machine learning, uh, like in basically your machine learning, which will be our main focus. But let me also tell you that uh, the decision uh, tree the tool which is used is commonly used in data mining and where it is like those who are from data mining background they must have uh, like they must have a good understanding of decision tree where they must be using it to derive a strategy to reach a particular goal like whatever the strategy they use to reach a target like they dis uh, make a target and how to reach that target they use uh, decision tree concept there as well in data mining. So in machine learning, it is also important and as well as in data mining, it is widely used. All right. So uh, like how can an algorithm be represented as a tree? So let me explain you by giving an example. Suppose let's say there is a patient. Okay. So this is a patient and he went to a doctor and he said that doctor i have a chest pain let's say he said chest pain he is having a chest pain so what doctor will say what doctor will do is doctor will uh, first check his bp right like most almost all the doctors check bp first and then the stethoscope they used to do the heart rate and everything so if the BP is there, like maybe a high or low, like it is, it comes into this branch. A BP is the BP is coming into high or low, whatever it is. It he will suggest, uh, like it will say it is a BP problem, and it will, and I'll just tell you what will happen next. And if it's no, then he'll check, uh, let's say pulse like sorry guys i'm not into medical domain i have no idea what exactly it is but i'm just trying to explain you what decision tree looks like so like if you go to a doctor and you say um, doctor i have a chest pain so he will say okay let me check your bp if there is a bp low or bp yes then again there will be two like there is a bp let's say issue so now bp issue bp can be low BP can be high. If BP is low, he will suggest, um, let's say, drink coffee and 
eat salty foods right whatever i know and if bp is high he will suggest like uh, go for this test or uh, let's do a ecg as well for chest pain and if there is no bp issue he'll check the pulse if the pulse is normal one once there will be a normal pulse then he'll suggest some other thing and the, if the pulse is high he'll again suggest ecg and similar thing i hope you understanding so this is what a decision tree looks like finally he will be uh, coming at a point at last and he will be telling like th there will be a result at the last and he will get to know that what exactly is happening with the patient and why there is a chest pain so he will get to know at last right so this is how like basically all on daily basis like each and every of us if, if we want to take a decision some some other other way we do somewhat like this we just don't make a tree or a flow chart like this but we do right so this was the best example which i can come up with to explain the decision tree this is how decision tree looks like uh, so this is just an example so and these are like in decision tree these are like your root node and also one more thing uh, our tree is upside down like roots are at the top just make a note of this roots are at the top and these are the leaves so it is upside down and this is a like root node or the parent node and these are the child nodes that which are carrying forward at the bottom so if i want to explain one more example a very simple example um let me tell you uh, okay so let's say uh, uh like a person is going to buy a flat or a room like not a room or like let's a house or a flat somewhere so he'll ask uh, like does uh, this house have more than two rooms if that flat has more than two rooms like if there is no like no there is no more than two rooms it's a 2 bhk flat no it's a 2 bhk flat so your predicted price is let's say christmas dollars and yes it ha it is a 3 bhk flat or 4 bhk flat then the predicted price is let's say this much so this is again we can simplify it we can create more branches to it like okay if it's 2 bhk flat the washrooms are attached to each room or there is a single washroom like this we can subdivide it and again so this is how decision tree can grow up and finally uh, like a person he can he can decide like which one which one he can buy so this is just i'm giving an example how decision tree looks like somewhat looks like i hope are you clear up to this okay so basically decision tree naturally represents the way we make decisions in our day to day life right so this is the the example which i'm showing you here right now is nothing but our uh, decision which make we make our day in our day-to-day -day life so decision tree are easy to understand and they are the basic building block for some of the best models uh, in data science right now like there are many other methods as well apart from decision tree but if you are very thorough with decision tree it they are like the building blocks of the one of the best project to work on in data science stream if you are good with decision tree you can build one uh, best decision tree model or something so in decision tree like there are there is one benefit like if you remember in your logistic regression like i have explained you in my logistic regression lecture 
um, you can only get some sort of linear boundary condition. You, if, if you, I hope you remember linear boundary condition. Uh, let me just show you. Let me just erase this. Somewhat like this, if you remember, in in our logistic regression, there was a linear boundary condition, right? But in decision tree, you can also get non-linear boundary conditions. Why? Like you, your question must be why and how? Because you can see in decision tree, we are not on they are like we are not only focusing on into the probabilities which are occurring. In fact, we are drawing a tree to get even non-linear data and also we can get some meaningful uh, information out of that. We are not completely based on probabilities here. Like we are creating trees, branches and there are many other things that you will understand in coming like in future. So uh, what uh, next also like I can tell you like in decision tree can be upgraded like if this is a decision tree you understanding decision tree you can say it is a up, there is a upgradation part of decision tree which is known as random forest you can say if this is your bachelor's this is your master's of the same thing and if you are good with decision tree you can easily upgrade yourself to random forest which is these days very popular especially with your if you are doing projects on your Kaggle Kaggle environment and all like if anyone have no idea about Kaggle Kaggle is nothing but a website kaggle.com where it is completely based on data science where you can like you get a lot of data sets, data frame, projects to work on, to practice on, even companies, they hire on the basis of Kaggle, like whatever, like they'll say if any company or any client have any issue coming up with their project and they are stuck somewhere, they'll just publish the project into the, into Kaggle and they'll rate a price like, like say 10,000 or let's say thousand dollars, anyone who solved this problem for me. So if like if you solve the problem ASAP and submit back to the person, you will get ten thousand uh, one thousand dollar like price varies like even I have seen twenty five thousand price even you can work in a team and solve the problem and you can submit that and they'll see if everything is okay and very optimizedly you have uh, like solved everything they'll accept your pro solved project and they'll provide you the money even if they like you they can hire you if you want you can get hired with them or not you can let you can be a freelancer there kaggle so basically like kaggle is nothing but a platform where you work on data science projects and their random forest will be very helpful for you and the basics of random forest will be coming from your decision tree it is and like if i want to say kaggle in short kaggle is nothing but your computer like it's a competition forum for data scientists okay also one more thing like if this is a tree and I've shown you already shown you examples and this is our trees so the data which we provide here at the root node or the parent node the data which we provide here is the test data Now I think everything must be somewhat, the picture is somewhat clear into your minds. Like if it's a test data, we are testing some of the other things and finally coming out with a result at the last. So this is a test data. Right, um, guys, please make a note. This is a very important uh, part of data science. So I want you to make notes of all these. You can pause the video and make note and then you can move forward. Okay, so I'll just erase this. Okay, so decision tree, I'll denote in short as DT. DT um, decision trees are also uh, like smooth with categorical values. Yeah, 
if you remember category categorical values in your logistic regression there uh, what what we were doing in logistic logistic regression if there are categorical values we have to do some or the other thing like dummy part like one hot encoder or response encoding uh, let me just write it down in logistic in your logistic regression if there are categorical values what we do we apply one hot you must have seen in the project which i have solved we must have we must use one hot encoder or there is a response encoding uh, like to solve it like we logic regression we cannot directly solve the categorical values and uh, using one hot encoder and response encoding it makes everything like it increases the efforts so wherever there is more human effort there are more chances of getting errors but in decision trees in decision tree works really very well with categorical values very well with categorical values so this is the one, one of the most important part of decision tree like we don't have to use one hot encoder or response encoding nothing like that we just have to assign the value and everything will be covered up and also one more thing um, in decision tree usually there is a binary tree like uh, like if this is, a, is a, a my root node and like this is two binary binary is two right so there is a binary tree but there are chances you can where you can even expect more than two like even you can expect three or four and then if, if this is if this is the case it's no longer binary it is your multi way splitting so we say it's multi way split so if there are two this is your binary split or we call it as binary tree and if there are more than two we call it as multi way split now uh, let me just erase it okay so let me just show you an example from a real data set from one of the medical domain because in medical domain usually doctors like i've shown you an example he with he like keep on iterating us like he keep on asking us okay so this has happened to you so what you ate yesterday and is there is a fever so whatever the reply we give yes or no basis on the basis of that in his mind he keeps on increasing the branches of the decision tree and finally he comes with a value right i hope you're getting it what i'm trying to say so again i want to give you an example of a uh, decision tree which is on based on a real data set of medical domain so guys if you don't know the value like the terms medical term that it's completely okay you don't have to know the medical terms but the thing is how decision tree works I'm going to show you that so uh, in this data set which I'll be which I have and from which I will be showing you a decision tree uh, we want to predict whether the patient has a heart disease or not same thing which I have explained you but it will be having it will be a little genuine decision tree having the real medical words or terminologies so you can just ignore the medical terms here all right so i'll just make a decision tree here this is something known as thal equals to 3 Pain type equals to one or two or three 
and this is something fluoroscopy color thank god i'm not a medical student <laughs> right you must be saying there are many such words like even i can't even pronounce most of the words so this is something like if thal is yes and no then i'll just guys i'll just draw it once and then i'll explain you you can like it will take like two three minutes you can just forward the video where i have completely drawn it so that you can save time there yes no so there is no heart problem if pain type is not among one two three so again you have to go for fluoroscope p colored which is less than 0 0.5 and if it comes to be yes so there is no heart issue if it comes as no there is a heart issue i don't know how what's happening here but it's a good example to explain decision tree no yes <clears throat> so there is a heart disease here mm, here enigma exercise as zero yes no yes if age is greater than or equals to 51 why 51 they can even take 50 okay yes they can 51 so again there is a subdivision if yes there is no heart disease if no there is a heart disease so guys this is a complicated decision tree where you can see if what is happening here is if something known as thal is equals to three like your doctor will check the reports and your thal is equal to three and if it is a three he'll say yes so he'll check the pain type if pain type is from one two or three the level of pain is one two or three yes so there is no heart problem if the level is more than three like it's not one two three it's more than so no then he'll go for fluoroscopy fluoroscopy colored and it is less than 0 0.5 and if it comes value as 0 0.5 so yes uh, like fluoroscopy colored comes to less than 0 0.5 so yes so there is no heart disease and if it comes more than 0 0.5 so there is a heart disease and if thal is not 3 like the value is not 3 maybe less than or greater than 3 so a doctor will ask you to go for fluoroscopic colored and it should be less than or equals to 0 0.5 if it is less than or equals to 0 0.5 he will ask you to do enigma exercise and if it comes to zero and if your age is 51 you have a heart disease greater than 51 and if it comes if it doesn't come to zero so yes you have a heart disease something like that so guys i don't know what are the medical terms here but this is a very good example of decision tree right look just ignore the terms and look at the tree this is your root this is your root node this is your root node and this here you will be providing your testing data your testing data will be entered here and everything will now change and this is how decision tree grows and everything is taken care here i hope everything is clear up to this right so you don't have to make a note of this if you are cleared with the decision tree in your mind 
so basically this is how we come up to a final decision with the help of decision tree so and and those who are from like uh, coding background any coding background you must be you must you can compare it to your if else code in any like java the if else like if it is yes go here else go here if else so it is very similar to your if else coding right those who can compare with that all right so i hope you are clear with the decision tree basic model structure how it is look how it looks like if you want i can give you n number of examples like this but i hope three examples which i have explained from basics of the room then easy doctor example and then highest with all the medical terms decision trees can be more than bigger than this branches can be bigger than this as well so stay tuned you will be facing in a coding part like maybe after two lectures you will see a coding uh, video where i have worked on a project of decision tree it's a big project where each and everything is explained i have explained so slowly and nicely that you will having no doubt but whatever i teach before the coding the theoretical part is important so you have to make note make a note in your into your mind all right so i hope if if you are clear up to this i'll jump to the next point which is also the important point in the decision tree which is your homogeneity okay so homogeneity homogeneity is nothing but uh, how, how to decide and divide which leaf will have what and how much like if this is a leaf so after dividing like which leaf like how to divide like what are the number of leaves possible and what values to be uh like stored here and how much values to be stored here everything comes under homogeneity that you will be seeing here okay so um, if i want to give an example here i can give uh, let's say uh, bp blood pressure is greater than 150 if blood pressure one greater is 150 so age less than 70 it greater than 70 so this value like like age and the value less than 70 and dividing into two parts less than 70 or greater than 70 or maybe uh, between 30 to 40 40 to 50 or there is a third leaf 70 to 90 this is homogeneity this we will be study we will be studying in under homogeneity how to decide and divide it so here uh, let me let me just open one more thing here all right so uh, can i erase this or i'll do it here okay so there is a rule in homogeneity there is a rule or you can even say a pattern pattern that has to be followed for accurate results like the result should be accurate here and this uh, after getting accurate results by following some rules this everything is known as homogeneity this concept basically the concept is known as homogeneity now to explain you by given example which i am very good at so let's say we have a root here and it is further divided into two parts it has some circles and it has some crosses okay so guys uh, you can see uh, these are in one leaf 
there are only circles and in other leaf there are only crosses so here we can say homogeneity equals to 1 which is your maximum homogeneity this is 1 so like you can uh, this is not possible in real life is almost in real world it is almost impossible to get homogeneity equals to 1 but uh, uh, like for, for perfect result, we try to get H value very close to 1. So, like this is very in, in real world scenarios or data sets which we'll, we will be doing, homogeneity equals to 1 is almost not equal. So, 1 is max here, like almost not possible here. So, you can also say this is your, if H equals to 1, this is your best. homogeneity this homogeneity you can call it as best homogeneity okay so all right so this is this now I, I must show you the real world example how real world homogeneity looks like all right so in real world, if I want to take the same example, this can be the case. I hope you are you are clear now what I'm trying to say. In real world, there can be some disturbances or you can say noises between the data sets which try to make which try to make homogeneity not equals to one here homogeneity can be approximately equals to 0 0.9999 which is not bad which is also good but this is not one still not one the, the maximum value so we cannot say it has say is 100 percent homogeneous i hope you are getting it what i'm trying to say it here and so this is not bad like this is a very good homogeneity if, if it is coming 0 0.9 it is very good indeed even you will not get such homogeneity you will be getting like homogeneity as 0 0.81 0 0.84 or 0 0.9 but 0 0.999 is a very good homogeneity all right so i'll just give you a example of bad homogeneity as well Let's say this is a leaf. We have some circles. This is a very bad homogeneity. Very bad homogeneity. Uh, you can say homogeneity is uh, 0 0.5 here which is your let's say 50 percent homogeneous this is 50 percent homogeneous so whatever we do we make sure that uh, uh, like just draw it here what we have to do is it if if we have h homogeneity here in your parent node we try to make sure that homogeneity increases when we further divide it into leaves. So, if H is here, we expect homogeneity should increase here. And how we do that? We keep a thres threshold. We keep a threshold as tau, a value of tau. Uh, we keep on checking that, like we uh, keep a uh, we fix a value tau or uh, named as threshold and we keep on checking that if homogeneity what we are getting is greater than tau if yes if it's getting greater than tau we just come stop there itself and make it a leaf node and like if it is greater than tau or equals to tau homogeneity sorry so we stop there itself. 
but if homogeneity is less than tau then we again keep on splitting it until your r h increases to our previous value i hope it is clear up to this so this is basically nothing but your whole concept behind your homogeneity i hope this is clear like whatever the value we have let's say in our parent node we have homogeneity as 0.6 so we will expect in our child node we have uh, our homogeneity is at least 0.6 homogeneity is greater than 0.6 not even equals to we expect 0. Point, maybe 0. 0.6 to 6 or 0. 0.69 or 0. 0.72 we expect a little higher homogeneity than our previous one. That's what I'm trying to say. And that's what how it happens. Right? Clear up to this. And guys, trust me, like if you're not getting it into this theoretical concept, I, even I'm trying to explain, go, I'll, I'm going very slow and giving you examples. But when after this, these lectures of, uh, of decision tree, there will be a project and in the project when you will be doing practicals like hands-on everything will be completely cleared into your mind okay so this is just a, the basic of what we will be doing in practicals okay so i hope you have written this so i'll just erase this now let me uh, give you another example uh, not example another concept which is your Guinea index. This is also important, I can say. Like, entire decision tree is very important. So, whatever the uh, topics will be covering, uh, I will be covering inside it, everything will be very important. Okay. So, Guinea index. So, what is Guinea index? Guinea index is nothing but it helps to decide what to choose for splitting uh, let me just write it down it helps to decide what to choose for splitting okay so um, let me just brief you with one data set here okay, let me just explain one data set here guys i want you to make this data set whatever i'm uh, like i'll be drawing now i want you to make a note because uh, there's a continuation of that which in which i will be erasing everything from the screen so that you can look that into your own notes and compare the values because the values will be gone if I'll erase the screen, right? So I just want you to uh, ex uh, like first listen carefully, make a note, understand, and then uh, like after pausing the video and then play it again. So let me just explain you one thing here, one concept. I'll just draw it first. Yeah, I'll just uh, may I'll just like write everything. I I would request you to uh, you guys also write each and everything here with me. It might look complicated right now, but it is not at all complicated. Trust me. Okay, so this is what I want to explain. So this is nothing but uh, a small data set which I have uh, like 
shown like this in which this part the left part from this line green line the left part is your uh, your people less than age 50 and right side are the people greater than age of 50 and the top one are female and the bottom one are male so this is nothing but this is a survey uh, who loves to play football like I'll just write loves to play football this is a survey on that or all right so less than 50 age if the uh, like if the person is less than 50 years of age and gender is female so there are 10 who loves to like positive results uh, p is positive and is negative so 10 loves to play football 10 females love to play football less than age 50 and 390 does not loves to play football at all and greater than 50 zero females and like to play football and 100 they simply don't play so nobody likes to play and okay so similarly with male 250 love to play football and 50 does not love to play football and at the greater than 50 age wow 50 people still plays football and 150 don't play football so this is what uh, our data set is looking like. I hope now you are clear up to this. It's not at that complicated. So if I want to split it on the basis of gender, on gender, let's take females first. Females, uh, 10, peop 10 females play football. 490 I'm um, sorry 390 doesn't play football uh, no no yeah it's 490 sorry yes because if we are taking on the basis of gender so we'll take entire thing not age on age we will taking the this part only so 490 doesn't play so total we have 500 for males love to play football is 300 in total you can see uh, in males you can see th they are 300 in total who loves to play football right like 250 plus 50 300 and 200 doesn't play football so your total is again 500 this is on the basis of gender i guys i want you to make a note of all this because the next step I, like I have a note of all these things but uh, I will see from that and I'll do the rest calculation but you should have a note as well to understand what I'm trying to explain here so this is on the basis of gender on the basis of gender we ignore age now on basis of age here we'll ignore the gender okay so if the age is greater than 50 age is greater than 50 50 people plays football 250 doesn't plays football so total is 300 if the age is less than 50 um, and 250 plus 10 6 260 260 plays football 440 doesn't play football and the total we are getting is 700 here all right so guys i want you to make a note of all this because i'm going to rub this and then i'll explain one concept here a formula on the basis of guinea index which is also the project is completely based on guinea index which i will be uh, working on so i want you to make a note of all this okay so i'll just erase you can pause it okay so uh, now let's take the probabilities. Uh, probabilities of let's female is obviously one by two because male and female, so probability is one by two. And how to find the Guinea index here? 
So there is a formula for Guinea index which is from I1 to K probability whole square. So what we do here is we look at the probabilities and square them up, nothing much. So I'll explain you <clears throat> how we split now on the basis of Guinea index or that too on the basis of gender. Now on gender splitting on gender on the basis of gender let's split and split and put this into into the formula. So guinea is probability is one by two for female. and it's 1 by 50 I hope now you understand why it's 1 by 50 you have to find the probability there from the back that is why I say I'm saying that you have to have all the nodes in front of you so 49 by 2 this is we are talking about females first and then males probability is 50 3 by 5 If you solve this, you will get a value of 0 0.74. On This is splitting on the basis of gender. Now if I want to split on the basis of age, it will somewhat look like 0 0.7. 260 upon 700 plus 440 upon 700 plus 0 0.7 so it will be 0 0.3 together it makes 1 probability is always 1 so 50 by 300 50 by 300 all the values I have written at the back in the previous page so you can compare each and everything you just know how to calculate the probability so here if you solve this you will be getting a value as 0 0.59 okay so here you can now here um, I think I should erase this page again so Guinea index on the basis of uh, gender I'm getting as 0 0.74 and Guinea index on the basis of age I'm getting as 0 0.59 so guys uh, this is how you calculate your Guinea index and after calculating your Guinea index you just compare which one is greater closer to 1 and whatever the value is obviously you will take that so here uh, we will be taking uh, like taking gender as my guinea index and we will be splitting on the basis of gender only and if you see the data set what I have written what I've shown you I think I can go back I'm not sure no no it will take a lot of time so uh, like it is obvious like we will be splitting on the basis of gender only right so age will not matter gender will matter in this case in our example so this is how we will be doing guinea index splitting here so it is easy right not that difficult you just know a simple of probability and you just have to find everything out there so whatever the value is greater you have to take that and you have to split according to that okay all right so guys in next video you will be seeing another concept same thing but in different way uh, it will be your information gain which in which we will be using a lot of 
entropy terms don't get afraid very easy very very easy and a lot of things like this entropy and you will see like it is completely opposite to your Gini index like not opposite you can say inversely proportional to your Gini index and, and everything you will be seeing in our next lecture so and it is very important as well as interesting as well the information gain part so I hope it is a uh, Gini index part the decision tree part up to Gini index is cleared into your mind and if it is not, watch this video again and again, two, three times, five times, ten times. But make sure it is clear into your mind and then move forward to your information gain. Nothing is difficult. Like if you think it is something is getting difficult if, and watch it again and again, everything will be cleared. Alright. So I'll just end this lecture here and you can move forward and go to information gain if you are clear with your Gini index. Alright guys, thank you so much. See you in your next lecture of information game. Thank you so much.